Mailbag bag time, bunch of stuff. Let's get stuck into it. As usual, there'll be links down below for things I can give you links for. Excellent, I've been waiting for these. Got a few different styles. These are micro HDMI to HDMI cables. I've just purchased a Raspberry Pi 5 and I'm going to configure that as a web server. I've already done like a 3B Plus web server which has been running for about five years now. So I want to replace it with a new one. So because it uses micro HDMI, I can't just plug the cable in. <laughs> so I've got these shorter cables which will work between the actual Raspberry Pi and a HDMI monitor. Different types, like different angle, left and right and straight. I wasn't quite sure which one's going to fit best, so I just got one of the ones I might need. These are, it's a single row. You can see they go each side, alternating directions. All right, and these are all square pin. So. How many more bags are they going to use? It's just ridiculous. And these ones, low profile ones instead, normally not bigger than this, normally sort of twice as high. So I'll get some low profile ones. Again, potentially for this project I want to work on, because they may need to fit into a smaller space than normal. I was thinking about using low profile headers instead of the standard high profile ones. So these are round pin types. Single line male and female type. Again, potentially for the project, and because they're quite low profile, gives you options for doing header systems. And these are round pin ones, which can be better sometimes than the square ones. Like if you're trying to put these inside a PCB, for example, sometimes the square ones don't fit the holes very well, whereas the round ones will fit better. So that's why I've got these. There's another one, lots of bags in. Ugh. What are these? Fast charge modules or some kind. Okay, power delivery modules. So you've got a USB-C port there and you've got DC terminals here. So you can do 8 to 30 volts input and up to 65 watts output. So I think it also negotiates the chip that's down there. So I think it automatically negotiates the voltage maybe. I'm not quite sure. I honestly don't know. I will have to test them out and see what they actually do. And it says power delivery. What does it say? 5 volt, 9 volt, 12 volt, 20 volt. So it looks like it does negotiate. You just have to make sure that the input voltage is above the upper voltage, otherwise it won't work because it's obviously going to be a buck converter. Cool. That's what I wanted, kind of. I've got a project in mind for this. Again, it goes back to the Raspberry Pi. USB filter boards. Ah, oh, brilliant. So this is a different project. This is meant for the motorhome where I'm converting some signals and I'm seem to be getting issues with um, voltage spikes causing problems. It's basically an inductor, a capacitance, and a series socket. So you just put it in series, and it will be going through some stuff. It's going to turn it over. It's like it's designed for two different kinds of plugs, so maybe it's two sockets. Maybe you can put a different socket on. Yeah, it's probably socket for socket, and then socket for plug. Oh, the data line's connected. Kind of need to know. So, data one. Data one. Yep, data two, data two, yep, cool. Positive, negative, yeah, okay. Are the negatives joined together as well or are they filtered? Yep, yeah, cool, they're ready. It's purely to try and filter out noise on DC supply. The actual data lines are not being filtered. It looks like they're just going straight through, purely filtering power. Now, I don't know if that's actually going to be adequate for what I'm doing. I'm going to put this in and see how we go. It's a shame it's not inside a little box. I'm going to have to probably heat shrink it or something. I saw these in AliExpress, I thought, oh, I'll get some of those. Mini bulk cutters. Just small ones. How strong it is, I don't know, but because they're this leverage effect, they're going to be quite powerful compared to your grip. It's got this stop here, which is not adjusted at all. Jaws come together fairly well, I think. Mm, yeah, might be alright. So it's got this stop here, which is doing, like, nothing, because... Looks like someone's designed it and not really thought of it. 
hey, how's it actually going to work? Of course, you know, it's kind of pointless, isn't it? And you might have a lot of bolts which are a bit longer. So like this might be good for that, so you can just cut the end of the bolt off and shorten it down to the length you want. I don't know how good this is, reality. I don't think you really need a stop on these, do you? Do you? I mean, you're barely even in there like, by a couple of threads, it doesn't really touch. I don't know what the point of that is. Seems to be completely pointless to me. Let's just wind it back in, but then it's not there. Just like that. Okay. Anyway, little bulk cutters. This is another selection, it seems. So let's start with these. What we got? These are for the brother P Touch, those little label printer things, like I use over here in my drawers. Right over here, these things. And I put on the last cassette of 9mm. So I bought some more. So I've got 6mm and 9mm. These are really great for doing like these drawers because it's nice clear labelling. And if you need to, you can wrap around and all sorts of stuff. It might do new lines and put multiple lines on the same piece of tape. This restocking, cheaper than getting locally, and they're just as good. I haven't had any problems with these things yet. The boys worked absolutely fine. And these bits are some foam. Eight pieces of this, nice, quite dense. Maybe it's closed cell foam, not quite sure. The idea is that when you're doing companion drawers, which is something I've been doing a lot of recently. I've been reorganising. You can get a component and shove it into the foam. You can have this cut to the side of the drawer and then you can put your, your parts in there and lay them all out. So if you've got a drawer with multiple parts in there, you can maybe do like one row of one part, one row of another part kind of thing. Or you can even just stack them up. You could put a few layers of this in there, which is why it's quite a thin one. And it's just thick enough, it depends on protrude. So it's thick enough for that. The shipping was actually a more expensive part of this process than this actual foam. Oh, this foam wasn't that cheap. I thought I'll get a bunch of it and that should do me for quite a while. I mean, you get some of this for ages. Again, cheaper from overseas than it is locally. Right, if you guess where this came from, put it down below in the comments. Now, I want wrong answers only. Okay? Wrong answers only. Let's be clear about that. As always, excellent packaging from DigiKey. Or is it DigiKey? You tell me in the comments down below. Right. Full of components. Loads and loads of components. What size are these bags? I don't think they came that big, anyway. <laughs> now, I might have spent a little bit of money at this company, which may or may not be DigiKey. This is um, CD4049 UBE, six channel inverters. Uh, CD4015 uh, shift registers. These are some surface mount ones. CD4097s, dual muxes. CD4023, three channel NAND gates. That's dip packages like CD4028BE decoders. CD4050, non inverting buffers. CD4049s again, 4002s, two channel OR gates, CD4081 AND gates, four channel two input. This could take a while. <laughs> uh, CD4066 quad bilateral switches, these are analog switches. So I've got some here. I think these are actually getting hard to get now. Yeah, I think they've been made obsolete. So if you ever use 4066s and things, maybe stock up on them while you can. A lot of these parts become obsolete now. They're getting harder to find. So if you do use these kinds of parts, I do recommend getting them. Uh, CD4020 binary counter. CD4070, which is a XOR gate, four channel, two input. CD4073, that's a AND gate, three channel, three input. CD4044, quad NAND gate, quad NAND with the iris latch. Okay. Uh, CD414, static shift register. CD4046 is a POLs. These are obsolete. If you use these, get some now because they're gone. <laughs> yeah, CD4040 binary counter. Got to get those ready, didn't we? CD4068 NAND and AND gate. A input. <laughs> CD4047 multi vibrator. CD4025. It's a NOR gate, three channel, three input. So this is why I got this foam stuff, right, for these chips and organising stuff. 
I'm going to keep them like this, it's too bulky. I've already got drawers set up for them, I've just got to put them in there. CD4052, it's a switch. Single pole, four throw switch. CD4012, NAND gate, two channel, four input. CD4007, dual complementary pair with the inverter. Okay, don't know exactly what it was. I've just got a whole bunch of parts basically thinking that I'm going to need them at some point. Um, and they're getting harder to get, like I said, so I'm stocking up. And CD4031, shift register static. That's that bag. Let's do the next one. I don't think the bag needs to be that long. Uh, 4027 JK dual flip flop. I don't say it's flip flop, but I think it is flip flop. Uh, CD4051, that's an IC Max. I think we said that one before, didn't we? CD4071, which is a OR gate, 4 channel, 2 input. CD4060, which is a binary counter, 14 bit. CD4024, another binary counter, 7 bit. CD4082, which is a Two channel four input AND gate. CD4077, which is a four channel two input XNOR gate. A bit less common. CD4030, which is an XOR gate, four channel two input. CD4026, IC decade counter, five bit. CD4018BE, divided by N five bit counter. Maybe it's five bit divider, I suppose you think of it that way. CD4089BE, binary rate multiplier. Sounds interesting. CD4035BE, that's a shift register, PN, P out, I'm not quite sure what it's referring to, I've forgotten. CD4029s, I think we had that before, 4 bit binary counter. CD4041, buffer, non inverting. CD4053, IC switch, single pole double throw, times 3. CD4042, quad D type latch. CD4034, BM, this is an SOIC version. So that's a CMOS bidirectional register. CD4021 BE, static shift register, 8 stage. CD4043, NOR gate, OS latch, 3 state. CD4072, 2 channel 4 input, OR gate. CD4093 is a really common, I've actually got a bunch of these, I don't know why I bought some more, I didn't actually need them. So it's a 4 channel 2 input NAND gate. CD4075 BE, that's a OR gate, 3 input, 3 channels. CD4076, which is D type single 14 bit, and the last one, thankfully. CD4067 BPWR, which is never, it's a TSOP device, this one, and it's a MUX, 16 to 1 MUX. So I've got to spend the next month organising parts, so I'll see you in about a month's time. Going through components is not necessarily that interesting. Reading all the part numbers out probably not interesting, so sorry about that. But maybe there's parts in here which you're interested in, and you're wondering where to get them from, and DigiKey has them. A lot of these dip parts are getting harder to find, as I said, so if you're using dip stuff to do repairs, like I am, which is why I've got all these dip parts, it's worth getting them whilst you still can. Um, supplies of these sorts of things are getting harder and harder to get, because that means going service mount these days. Some of these parts I've got are service mount, because there was no other option. I'm hoping to maybe make up some adapters or something to convert those to being dip packages. I don't know if I'll do that very easily or not. I might be something I need to look into. Bear in mind the thing behind the curtain over here. Just forget this. Pretend you can't see it. You'll find out about this in due course. Other videos to watch down below. Hopefully more interesting ones. <laughs> Subscribe over there. Put the spool link over there to help me buy things like this. Hold on. Help me buy things like this. So that I can keep on doing repairs with hard to find parts. Well, parts which will be hard to find in the future. Cheers, Hey, did you care? It did all fit in one bag.